the Golden Path to Ternanag is open once more, and the greatest Celtic storytellers have gathered for a once-in-a-lifetime journey into the other world. When they return, they'll bring with them tales of the creatures they met and the adventures they lived. Over time, those stories will become a saga, and the most epic saga will live on forever. Baylor, the evil-eyed chieftain of the Fomora, has his own vision of his legacy. He has recruited his own storytellers to retell the stories, with himself as the hero. Build your saga as best you can and preserve the truth of the other world, or at least something like it for all time. We are set up for that solo play of Terranog. I'm going to go over very briefly how to play. If you want a little bit more detailed, you can check out the unboxing and a brief how to play. I'll link it up there and down below. I decided to put Baylor's card right here in the middle. Figure it's the easiest. Normally that spot is empty in a two-player game, but tight table space in this way, it's always front and center. So Baylor is always going to take the first turn. They're going to flip over a top card. If it has the alum symbol in it, which is a little plus sign, you'll see it right there. Then they're going to flip their card to the next side, from highest to lowest, lowest to highest. They're then going to put out one of their storytellers. If it's on the highest, it's you're going to look at the highest added together and put it between those two. If there is a tie, that's why the first player marker is here. You're going to start, and the first one going clockwise is where they'll go. And then I'll put mine out. We'll go back and forth. And then when they have to select a card, again, it's going to go highest or lowest. If there is a tie, it's going to go in clockwise order. Uh, I don't remember what he does if he goes on an extra quest. Does it say, um, do 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 Let's go, and he chooses a card for a lost storyteller who will still take the highest or lowest from those remaining. All right, so now we know. So he is going to go first. So we discard a top card. It is not an Elam card. So an Elam. Now I have that listed here, so I'm going to go Elam card. So we have 13, 13, 10, 9, 11, 11, 8, 9. So it looks like 13. There is a tie. Starting here, going clockwise, but now he goes there. My turn, now we're going to go to there. His turn, he flips it over, no symbol. So this was the highest, so I'm there. So now we have a 10. 11 down here is the next one, so he goes there. And now my turn. Uh, let's go ahead and add our, oh, that's his. Let's go ahead and help ourselves right there. Hasn't changed, so now he goes down here to the 11. Done. So my final one is going to be, I'm going to go right there. All right, so now I get to choose first. So how these are going to score this top row is I'm going to add my odds and evens and take the lower score. The middle one wants different numbers and colors, and the bottom one you start at 25, then you're going to subtract each value but you ignore duplicates. So optimally I want a bunch of ones or twos in that bottom row. I don't have ones or twos out here, so that's not gonna be helpful. So instead I think I'm going to go for my different ones up here and then work on those as we go along. So my first pick is I think we are going to take the Ravenous Olifest. Olifest. And we're not going to put him out yet because you add one to his for every card to its left. So you optimally want him to be back here possibly, which I think I am. He's going to maybe help me win this at a high score. I think we're going to start by we're going to discard uh, Ma Mel. And I'm going to draw three cards, play one, and discard the others. So any ones? Nope. I have eights and sevens and a four. We're going to take the 8. Now we're going to take the 7 and put it right there and discard. So for his card, what we're going to do is we're going to line them up here in color because that will make sense at the end. So we go pick for him. He discards the top card. So his hot, the highest card he's on, I believe, is this 8. 
So he is going to take said eight, and we're going to put that up here, like so. Now my turn. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab the valley. So now I obviously don't want to put any green cards there. I'm going to have to double up some color because there are four colors, five spots, but as long as it's a different number, I should be fine. Uh, but for starters, let's, let's put a five up here. So I'm trying to think, so if I put the, if I hold this all the way to the end, that'd be four, so that'd be, he'd be a nine, so that'd be a bunch of odds I technically want to do up there. All right. His turn. Flip the card. Nope. Highest card is a seven. Like so. And then he, then mine obviously is going to be the cobblers. And you know, we're going to discard my other mom Mal to draw three and place one. Ooh, so these two are promo cards. And you can, uh, if they're in the top row, you can change it to a 10. And I think I am going to grab that and put that up there. So that becomes a 10. Let me grab one of my discs. That's a 10. And the main reason I'm doing that is because if I'm hoping to get that ravenous as a 9, then I want to try and keep these as close as possible. He grabs this other blue. All right, these get, oh, I should have flipped it over. There we go. These get discarded. His car flips automatically at the end. And now I have to discard a card from my hand. I think we are going to discard the valley, like so. All right, so that was the first round. We are now going to set up for the second round again. We got there, there. So I will say we have another one of the promo cards in this one. And this is you may wait until the end of the saga phase to play cards to your saga instead of playing them on your turn. I really like that one. That's a way to make sure you have everything you want and then lay them out in the order you like. That being said, I'm going to skip ahead until the last round and I'll see you there.
Oh yeah, I'm in the last round. I got so involved. All right, so I am still. So I'm probably gonna go. I have this. I do have this one that lets me swap any positions. And because I move that up, I could only get four, or I could leave four here and see how I want to do this. So I did get that card that lets me play cards at the end of my saga, which is nice. So is their draw. I'm pretty sure they flip that up so they stay at the highest, which is, I believe, this, oh, this eight up there. I'm grabbing this one. He is going to grab the highest again, which is the seven. I am grabbing this one. That doesn't really matter, but he would have flipped and he gets this three. All right, so now I play my last three cards. We got one, one, one. I'm thinking we're just going to do this five. So we're actually not going to use this swapping one. There we go. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, which is what you're supposed to end with. All right, so let's get all this out of the way, and we will do final scoring. Kick all that out. Grab this. All right, so I am going to play on easy. And what easy is, is I'm going to discard three cards from his colors up here, and then we are going to be scoring these as thusly, and you will see. That will be yellow and blue. So what we're gonna look at really quick is, so I have four green, I have four blue, so he's not gonna win blue. But I don't have any yellow, and I don't have any red. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of two of the greens so I can make sure I win that one. And then for the third one, it doesn't really matter. Oh, we can tie there. So I'm going to discard that one. Now we look at our score sheet. So we will put my name, and then we have Baylor. All right. So he's going to score 14, 20, and 20 based on the numbers down here. So let's look at this. First we have, so for our odds, we have 5, 14, 19, 20 for our even, so we score 19 points. So we got them by 5 points there so far. All right, so we have 3 different colors, which is 6. Four different numbers, so that is 16. So he got us by four points there. I am correct, right? Yep, four different values. Alrighty, and my bottom one, so we minus three points from the 25 is 22 points. Now we do the regions. So Start off with red. I have two red. I, he has two red. We each get five points. Green is I have four, so I get the eight. He gets the three. Yellow, I have nothing, so I get zero points, and he gets eight. And blue, I have four, so I get eight. He gets three. We're not playing with the subplots, so let's add this up. 6, 20, 40, 60, 65, 73 for him. Uh, mine's a little more, oh, that's 35, 40, 70, 78. If I did that accurately. 16, 21, 43, 53, 59, 69, 78. Yep. So I won by five points against him. So I really do like the promo cards. Both of those are the promos. The ability to just wait until after you grab all your cards. Especially if you can get that in a multiplayer one where other people could be grabbing it from you. This one you at least can kind of tell what he may go for. It's either going to be the lowest or the highest. So if there's something in between those, you're all good. But again, that is Terranog. So if I could ask you to go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, share, and ring the bell for our video and this channel. I could have you also go ahead and look for our podcast where podcasts are found. 
and support our Patreon. All of that would be obliged. And with that, top of the day to you.